We've got a lot of ground to cover with our next guest from the markets to the Fed and deals on Wall Street. We want to bring in Peter Orzag, CEO of Financial Advisory at Lazard. On October 1st, he's going to be taking over as CEO of the firm. Peter, also the former director of the Office of Management and Budget under President Obama. Uh, let's start, though. I don't know if you heard Neil Kashkari's comments over the weekend just about where he sees the economy going in terms of a soft landing versus a recession uh, and also whether there will be another interest rate hike. I'm so curious where you land if you were on the Fed board. Well, Andrew, as you know, for a while, I think the Fed uh, has been too aggressive. In other words, what we're seeing is inflation is coming down pretty aggressively. I don't uh, want to declare mission accomplished yet, and I think some people are doing that prematurely. This thing has surprised us in lots of different ways, both good and bad, and so we should wait and see. But that's the point. We should wait and see. Uh, inflation is coming down. I, I personally believe that a lot of that has to do with post-pandemic uh, effects as opposed to the Fed tightening. And I think caution remains uh, warranted. So uh, where I guess I'd part cut, where I uh, share the view is I think the odds of a soft landing are certainly rising. They're not 100 percent, but they're rising. Uh, where I'd part company is it's not entirely clear to me that we do need a uh, massive or significant increase in unemployment to have inflation continue to come down. It's come down a lot without it rising in unemployment. And everyone who is absolutely confident that the next step requires a rise in uh, joblessness also was saying that about the decline in inflation that's already occurred. Right. So it sounds like you're actually in Paul Krugman's camp, who last week talked about uh, discombobulation and recombobulation uh, post-pandemic as the, the real reason uh, for why we've seen inflation come down, and perhaps the credit doesn't go to the Federal Reserve. Look, we're going to have to wait for history to, to write that story, but that's where I would put my bet right now. Absolutely correct. And, and therefore, then, the question becomes, you know, Kashkari did mention, do we need to increase interest rates, you know, one more time this year? That's, that's an open question. How much of it, I mean, even Paul Krugman suggested that while it may be so many of these issues around supply chains and other things, he said, he still would have raised rates. So how much, I mean, nothing's black and white in life. Is there some middle there? Well, I think at this point, uh, there is a significant amount of monetary policy tightening that, uh, you know, has been exerted. And uh, I would just wait and see how it's playing out. The Fed has almost no risk of losing control of this process, other than by talking about it so frequently that they're, they make it seem like they're afraid of losing control of the process. Right. Long-term inflationary but, expectations are very well anchored. The market thinks that inflation is going to come down. There's no sort of flashing red sign that the Fed uh, is about to lose control of what's happening here. And so this anxiety that is coming from the top of uh, policymakers in Washington about that very thing, in other words, losing control of the inflationary process, seems to be disconnected from the facts. Right. Let's talk deal-making. Uh, Lazard and yourself famously... Uh, sure whisperers to CEOs across the country. What's your sense of confidence? I mean, we've had this, you know, bull run, at least, or some kind of run. I don't know what you call it, bull run, bear run, whatever it's been for, t for 10 days. I think people are, are feeling it uh, a little bit. Are you, are you getting a sense that uh, the pipeline in terms of deal making is, is changing? It does feel like that we're at a turning point. I mean, if you think about it, there have been uh, a lot of positive drivers, the energy transition, the life sciences revolution, you were just touching upon that, uh, reshoring, ongoing uh, technology. Um, but there have been three big headwinds in deal making. The first has been the speed of the interest rate increase. Uh, interest rates went up by, you know, 525 basis points in a year and a half. That caused a big divide in pricing between um, buyers and sellers. The longer that that the, the price declines on, in terms of equity values have been in place, uh, the easier it is to bridge the gap between buyer and seller. Second uh, headwind has been financing and the uncertainty over that, having to do with how rapidly rates were rising. Regardless of whether the Fed ra raises one more time or two more times, um, it's, it, I think it's fairly clear that we're nearing the end if we're not already at the end of the tightening cycle, and so that factor is a bit better. And then the third one is antitrust and regulatory. And there, there has been a significant amount of uncertainty introduced by the shift in uh, the big is bad school. Um, but there have also been a significant number of losses in court. And so I think many boards are starting to look at that and say, well, maybe we'll go forward with the deal anyway, and we just have to be prepared to litigate because right. at the end of the day, we'll win in court. Well, let's drill down on that last point, because you're absolutely right that the sense of where the DOJ is and where the FTC is 
there's been a lot of concern. A lot of people haven't wanted to pursue deals because of it. Are you, I mean, I know there's conversations happening, but is, is there anybody you think who's, gonna, who's willing to pull the trigger and say, you know what, let's go to court. Let's, let's just do this. And do you do it now or do you wait until 2024? How much does the election factor into that thinking about massive sort of headline grabbing transactions? Well, waiting for the presidential election, it's not just till 2024. You obviously would have to wait. Right. Uh, first, you have to bet on whether there's a change in, in uh, administrations and then wait for the new. It, that's You're waiting a long time. I do think the tenor on this is shifting. So if you've got uh, a deal, especially a vertical deal, where the uh, government's loss rate is much higher um, and traditional antitrust uh, perspective suggests, you know, more latitude for vertical deals. If you've got a vertical deal uh, and you're willing to spend some extra money on lawyers and you have the patience to extend the deal uh, tenure, the, the length of time, uh, I do think that those conversations are shifting. I, um, you know, this will be a process. Uh, the more the government loses, the more uh, boards and, and C-suites will be um, correctly emboldened to go ahead uh, and, and have some confidence that they'll win in court.